get started today. Um, <coughs> it seems to be a big winter holiday, so not many people are attending lecture today, but they can see the recording afterwards. Uh, the main points that will go on the lecture today is that I will be going through uh, chapter six. And in the <coughs> um, sixth edition of the book, it's also called Developing a Project Plan. And we will go through some of the exercises that are in the book and also in the note set, which is uh, the note set is from the third edition. So, but there doesn't seem to be many differences in that. Um, <coughs> Um, some of you have given me exercise one already, and that's good. It's one of the three mandatory exercises, and it's expected that everybody uh, delivers the exercises before you can take the exam. So on the last uh, day of lecture, <coughs> I expect <coughs> that everyone will fulfill these exercises, and then I will send in a list to the administration about who can take the exam. <coughs> so, um, yeah, let's get started with uh, this chapter. Oh, one other announcement is that I'm trying to uh, get some uh, guest lecturers to come in, and they will be giving. Uh, I'm, I'm speaking with um, Steinar Christofferson. I don't know if you've. Um, he's doing the case studies uh, course in project management. And um, he's so, we're, so we will have discussion, and we hopefully he will come and give some guest lectures in this course, so he can uh, share some of his real life practical experiences with project management with you, because uh, this for me is not my normal background work experience. Uh, I just take it from an academic perspective, and I've done project management with um, research projects but not with large, large uh, corporations. So it would be nice to get some experience from him as well. Okay. And he's uh, going to allow us to record the lectures also, so that will be on, on Himmeldex as well. OK, so um, uh, what we are going to talk about today is uh, the project network. And this is a basically a flow chart that shows the interdependencies of the uh, activities that have to be done in the project. And it's very important because it helps the project manager to understand uh, what is the critical path through the activities of the project. You get one activity done, it means you're clear to start the next activity. and. Uh, there's a chain of activities that have to happen. And sometimes this chain is, is in serial. It's one at a time. But some events can be happening in parallel. So uh, this is a visualization of the flow of activities. And it also allows uh, the project manager to be very clear about when is the first earliest starting time for a certain activity, when is the latest starting time for an activity. And it allows them to be able to schedule labor, which is schedule labor and equipment, communicate with everyone that's involved in the project, estimate the duration of time for the entire project, uh, use it as a basis for budgeting, and to be able to identify what are the critical activities and what cannot be delayed. Otherwise, the whole project completion time gets delayed. So we, um, <coughs> he uses it uh, to stay on target, to keep up with the uh, current plan. And we start out with the work breakdown structure, which identifies uh, different organizational units are responsible for different activities in the project. And they are doing the, um, they are defining these activities in terms of work packages. So each activity is, a, is its own work package. And what we want to do is we want to be able to come from this uh, cluster of work packages to a drawing that is the flow chart for the, for the research, for the project. 
And this is an example, it's also on page 163 in the book that shows you how you go from the work packages uh, to uh, the, the network flow um, chart, which is, it's going to be called an, an action on network uh, flow chart. Um, or an activity network, but it's a, it's an ac it's actions on nodes. Uh, this is opposed to other types of flow charts that make use of uh, the arrows to identify activities. This is we are going to be identifying the activities with the nodes rather than the arrows. So if you look on page one seven uh, one sixty three in the book, they actually have the previous. Uh, this, this is at the top, and uh, what you need to do is look at that, and you can see that activity, uh, this, this activity in the network A has in it two work packages, and the D1 is, uh, one one is specifications, and D12 is uh, documentation. And then, so you usually have some in terms of um, uh, systems design, you might have your specifications first, and then your development or production in the middle, and then your testing at the end. So here we have B and C. We have B is, uh, it mentions uh, the work package uh, P, which P10.1, which is a prototype one, and it mentions S, 22.1, which is the preliminary software. And so these things would indicate that these are happening in parallel. OK, so that's there. And then you have uh, the second prototype. And then you have, um, here you have the final software, and then the testing. But these were all listed as uh, work packages um, in the prior list. Okay. So uh, the terminology that's used in these uh, project networks is uh, you have an activity is an element of the project that requires time. And uh, you have a merge activity is one that has two or more preceding activities. So this is an example of an activity that could um, require time. And then this would be a merge activity that has one or more preceding activities. And concurrent activities are the ones that can happen at the same time. Uh, and, but it's, um, they can have different uh, start times as well. But there can be some overlapping, acti overlapping time when they're, doing, when they're happening at the same time. And so these would be in parallel with each other. Uh, in terms of the... The book mentions also the path and the critical path and event and also burst activities. So I believe there's a PowerPoint for this as well. Okay, so the path is the sequence that, the, that connects the dependent activities. So a path would be a path from A to D would connect the activity B in between. And sometimes there's only one uh, link in the path. And so there's C is the preceding activity of D. And the critical path is the longest path through the activity network that allows for the completion of all project-related activities. And this is uh, something that's not said in the book, but it's kind of the implication is also correct. Uh, but it's basically, um, let's see. Okay, so um, it says, uh, the definition of the book, when the term critical path is used, it means the path with the longest duration uh, through the network. If an activity on the path is delayed, 
the project is delayed the same amount of time. So that means that if you have, um, uh, the, if, if this is on the critical path, if this gets delayed, then it uh, is going to delay the completion time of the whole project. So uh, this one says it assumes that A plus B is greater than the minimum of C in the length of times to complete the activities. Okay, so then in that case, um, is, yeah, okay. So it's the, it's the one that, uh, that cannot be delayed, otherwise the whole length of the project takes more time. So it, that's where the project managers usually put their resources in, because if they are going to delay something like B from happening, say, then it will make the whole project take longer, if that's the critical path. <coughs> and then there's also an event, is a point in time when the activity is started or completed and does not consume time. So that's a point when it's, um, it's like a measurement point. And then the burst activity is an activity that has one or more activities immediately following um, more than one dependency arrows flowing out from. So this is a, a is a burst activity because there's more activities following it from it. And then the, the two types of networks that I mentioned before, there's activity on node and activity on arrow. And these are just a different ways of visualizing how you draw these networks, where you put the information based on the node, the activities on the node of the network, or then you could put it based on the arrows of the network. And the appendix of the chapter talks, uh, gives example of activity on arrow. But in at least what I've seen, in most cases, this activity on node is, is used. So that's what we will, we will be using as well. OK. So OK, so some of the things that uh, are important to these uh, networks are that uh, they have to flow from left to right. So you read them from left to right. The activities can uh, begin until uh, a new one can begin until all of its activities are complete. So um, usually each activity is given a expected uh, earliest start time or latest start time, earliest finish time, latest finish time. And these activities are expected to be done before the next activity is, is started. Uh, so the arrows indicate precedence in the flow. So one uh, points to another. That means the one that's on the left comes before the one that's on the right. Uh, the, you identify each activity with a unique number. There's going to be a number. And we're going to make use of a legend so that you can see what each um, a uh, piece of information means within the charts. And looping is not allowed. So it's you're not allowed to go from activity A to B to C and then back to A again. It's just a complete flow from left to right. No conditional statements are allowed. So you can't have if A is successful, then do B. But if not, do C. You can only have it going from a to B, and maybe B and C have to go in parallel, and then to D. But you cannot have conditional statements. It's not a, it's not a program. And then they have uh, identifiable start and stopping nodes for the whole network. So this is activity on node fundamentals. You have A proceeds, is preceded by nothing. B is preceded by A. C is preceded by B. And then. Um, you have x, which is bursting into y and z. So y and z are preceded by x. And y and z can be happening at the same time, but they don't have to be happening at the same time. 
And then you have the mergers. Um, and we have J, K, and L. Uh, we have M is preceded by J, K, and L, and the J, K, and L can happen at the same time. And they have to be completed before M can begin. And then another thing that's allowed is crossovers. So you can have this kind of uh, crossing here. So you have that Z is preceded by both of these, and that both of these have to take place before Z happens. These can happen in parallel, and maybe this also is dependent on both of these happening. So here we can look at an example that they give in the book. And we can already uh, begin to draw one of these nodes based on this information. So just OK, so if we have A is, uh, this is Coal Business Center. County Engineers Design Department. And if you have activity A, is application approval. And it has no preceding activity. So we would do something like this is A. I guess I could put A inside the middle. Yeah, I could put A here. So that's A. And then we have um, construction plans and traffic study and service availability check. So this is activity B, C, and D. And they all have A as a preceding activity. So then we would do something like this. E, C, D. Then we have um, a staff report and commission approval. And those are both preceded by B, C, and some, one of them is preceded by D. So we have E and F. Okay, so um, we have E is preceded by B and C. And then we have uh, F is preceded by B, C, and D. Okay. And then we have F is commission approval. Um, that's F. OK, G is wait for construction. So we have G is preceded by F. And then we have uh, H is uh, occupancy. And that's preceded by E and G. Okay. So we just uh, drew the network based on the description of the activities and the, what are the preceding activities. And you can see that this is like a partial network that shows that uh, B, C, and D are preceded by A. And then we have the complete network, which is the same as what we've drawn here. Okay. So. Um, this uh, book spends a great deal of time uh, discussing uh, how you identify certain aspects of this, uh, this network. 
and what we're going to make use of is um, the legend that's in the network. Let me see if I find it here. Yes. So on page 170, there's a legend, and some information is going to be gone, gone in with these notes. So usually we have an ID for the activity. So the ID goes here. And then we have an earliest start time. And we have an earliest finish time. We have the Slack. We have a description. Latest start time. Duration. And latest finish time. So when we fill in information for these networks, we should use this kind of setup. And here we see that what is, you first you're going to fill in the information using a forward pass, and then you're going to fill in the information using a backward pass. And the information that you need to find out is how soon can the activity start, how soon can the activity finish, uh, how soon can the project finish. So this is... Um, I think this um, this ET is. I'll explain that later when we when we finish doing an example. It's the how soon can it finish? It's the ES of the last node in the network, basically. Okay, so it's uh, this for the last node when you're when you're finishing. And then on the backward pass, it's how late can the activity start? You're, f you're filling in the information from backwards. Uh, how late can the activity finish? Uh, which activities represent the critical path? And how long can it be delayed? Or what is the slack or the float time? So we'll go through these examples. Um, but just so you know, that's what these things are, are representing. So this is the... Uh, Start. This is from the forward pass. Start. Earliest start. Uh, earliest finish. This is from the backward pass. Latest finish. Uh, latest start. And this is the slack. Okay. So uh, based on our previous network, we have some activity times. And I think it's filled in on the next one. Yes. So uh, if you look back at the, at the previous slide, we have the activity time for application approval is five. And maybe that's five days, maybe it's five hours. It depends what the time unit is it's being used. And then we have the construction plan is 15, traffic study is 10. So you can already see A, B, C is 5, 15, 10. If you look on here, you have A, this is the duration, 5, 15, 10. And so for all of these, we filled in the duration in this, uh, these things here. Okay, so according to our legend, this is the duration. And this is in the forward um, pass we're doing this. Okay. We, well, we, the, some expert would identify uh, what they think the, the duration of these activities are. Okay. Okay, so for the forward pass, we have, um, and the forward pass is also mentioned on page 171. It's discussed. We're going to fill in uh, what is the earliest start. 
and what is the uh, the earliest start and the um, and the earliest finish times. So you can see here we have the first node, the earliest start is zero, and we know the duration is five. So that's here, that's the duration. So the earliest start for these are five. And then we have the earliest finish because this is the duration of five. So we have the earliest finish is five. And we see that this has a duration of 15. So the earliest date is five plus 15 is 20. So that's the earliest finish. And here is 5 plus 10 is 15. 5 plus 5 is 10. Okay? Uh, then we have, uh, so we know that the earliest finish being uh, presented forward in these three places is 20, 15, and 10. So we have the earliest, um, so we know in the forward pass that the, it's the, um, uh, the earliest start plus the duration unless there is a merge activity and then you select the largest uh, earliest finish time from the preceding nodes okay so here the earliest start time is then 20 because we would pick the largest earliest finish time from the preceding nodes so here we had, this was the earliest finish was 20, 15, and 10. The largest earliest finish time is 20. So that becomes the earliest start time for this node because this is a merging node. And then we have for here, this was the earliest finish was 15 and 20. And we see that the largest of those is 20. So that becomes the earliest start time there. Uh, this one only has one preceding node, and we have 20 plus 10 is 30, and so this becomes the earliest start time. Uh, this has 20 plus 15 is 35, and here we have 20 at uh, 30, which we got from here, plus 170, which is the duration, is the earliest finish time is 200, and this is also a merge activity here. So the earliest, uh, the, the latest, um, earliest finish time from the preceding nodes is 200, the, the largest one. And so the largest one becomes the earliest finish time here. Going forward in this network, the, what they call as the TE, or the, um, they call it the, um, the earliest termination or the termination estimate. So the termination estimate for this on the forward pass is 200 because that's the earliest time we can hope that it will uh, be finished. So that is usually what we, we, we call this, um, what we go back. We call that the expected time to finish the project. But that's not, that's the, it usually you put how soon can the project be finished. So that's the earliest expected time to finish the project. It's not the latest. So again, this kind of repeats what we said about the duration. You add the activity times along each path in the network. ES plus duration is EF and carry the early finish uh, of the, to the next activity where it becomes the early start unless the succeeding activity is a merge activity, in which case you take the largest of the preceding activities. So that's just what we did. Okay, then in the backward pass, we're going to be filling in these numbers, the latest finish and latest start times. Okay. Okay. 
So the LF, this is also a similar type of formula. Um, so you subtract the activity times along each path, starting with the project and end activity. So you have the LF minus the duration equals the LS. And it says you carry the LS to the next preceding activity unless the next, the next preceding activity is a burst activity. In which case you select the smallest LS Uh, the, of all the immediate successors activities to the uh, to the uh, to establish its LF okay I have no idea if this is getting into the picture here. Um, so, um, oh, I'm sorry, this was, um, this was this when this could start. So I'm sorry, the, I was mistaken before. This is the, the project completion time because you have this activity as well. So this was the ET or the TE at the end. I'm sorry, I missed, I missed that. Um, so then we work our way backwards. Um, uh, we have uh, the uh, 235, which is the the completion time, the ET. So I need to I need to correct that. I'm sorry. The the ET, or the sometimes they call it the TE. They just been switching that around. Was 235. Okay, and that was uh, the completion of the last node of the project. And then we have um, the LF, minus, so we need to find what this is, the LS, and that's the LF minus a duration, and that is also the, this as well. So this is the last, this is what we start with. So we have, <coughs> we have uh, 235 minus 35 is 200. And then we have, here we put in 200, and we have 200 minus the duration, which was already in there before, is 30, and this is 185. So these are, these are the latest start times that have been calculated now. And then if we go backwards, we put in, there's only one proceeding here, so we put in 30, minus 10 is 20. but uh, with these now, we have uh, this one is um, is um, it's taking from the proceeding. Okay, this one's proceeding from here, so we have twenty and one eighty five, and then it takes the smallest LS of the immediate successor. So here we take the smallest one. So this one has a predecessor of 185 and of 20. And we take the smallest predecessor and put it here, and that becomes the uh, latest start time, <coughs> a latest finish time, rather. So this is the latest finish time, and then we have the latest finish time. Yeah, so that's here. We have the latest finish time minus 15, and this becomes the latest start time. So with this one, we only have uh, one, we have two proceeding. We have 185, this is Eve's proceeding, and this is, um, uh, or the six, I guess they call these successors because they come after. Yeah, so we have this one, or this one, 
and we get 185 and 20, we take the smallest one. So the 20 goes here. And then we have 20 minus the duration 10, and this becomes the LS of 10. So with this one, there's only one that's the successor here. So we have the 20, we bring it here, and 20 minus 5 is 15. Okay. And then we have, um, so for these, we have three that are successors. And for this node, we take the smallest one of 5, 10, and 15, and that would be 5. So we put the 5 here, minus 5 is 0. So then we have been able to complete these, this legend for this table because we, we did the top part on the forward pass. And we, then we did the bottom part on the backward pass. But we haven't actually filled in the this, this slack yet. So that, that will be the next step. So this uh, formula for this uh, here is on page 168. This is 168. Okay, And this is doing the backward pass. Okay, so this summarizes also. Uh, you subtract the activity times along each path in the network, so you have LF minus duration is LS, and you carry the late start uh, to the next activity where it becomes the late finish unless the succeeding activity is a burst activity in which you take the smallest LF from the preceding activities. Okay, so the next is to determine the slack or the float. <coughs> okay. Uh, so slack is the amount of time an activity can be delayed after the start of a longer parallel activity or activities. And then the amount of time the activity can be delayed without delaying the entire project is the total slack. And so usually you have a you have certain slacks along the way, but you have a total slack for the project. And if you use up some of the slack for the total slack at a different activity, then you end up, like if you use it all up in an early activity, then you don't have anything left for a later activity. So it affects the whole network. You usually have to send a message uh, to the project re responsible for the work package that come further down the, the network path. So um, the critical path is the network paths that have the least slack in common. And usually, uh, in like this example, yeah, a lot of times this um, critical path has uh, slack that's equal to zero. But if it doesn't have slack equal to zero, then it's um, <coughs> a special case. So uh, just can write slack is basically the ls minus the es is equal to the slack or the L F minus the E F is equal to the slack. So I'm going to show this as well. Mm -hmm. So critical paths usually have a slack that is equal to zero, or in a special case, they have um, the EF minus the LF of the last activity. So
let me try to look at this. Um, so we have, um, I think it's better to work from backwards. LF minus EF. So if we look at the LF minus the EF here, we have a psych of zero. And if we look at the LF minus EF here, we have a psych of zero. If we look at the LF minus the EF here, we have 200 minus 35 is 165. Okay. And then here we have, this is also LF minus EF is zero. LF minus EF is 10. LF minus EF is 5. 20 minus 15 is 5. LF minus EF is 0. LF minus EF is 0. And if we see throughout this network, we have a path where this slack number is equal to 0 here, 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 and here. So we have a path which is outlined here and following these uh, dotted lines, this happens to be the critical path for this network. So we calculate this. So I use this formula, LF minus EF is 0. And then we have <coughs> um, the critical paths have a slack of 0. But in some cases, um, It says that uh, uh, the total slack, let me see. Uh, if one of, the s one of the activities in the path, if slack is one of the activities in the path is used, the ES of all the activities that follow in the chain will be delayed and their slack reduced. So the use of the total slack must be coordinated with the partner participants of the activities that follow in the chain. Okay, so this has to do with the uh, critical path. So if you use up, um, um, if you use up some of the slack, usually the the uh, ls minus the yes or is a zero, but if you use up uh, like this says, um, uh, there can be sometimes an imposed duration that's not equal to zero. And if that is the case, then uh, you have the LF minus EF minus LF of the last activity. And in this case, you might have to start some activities earlier to make up for the difference in the in the slack. This is kind of an issue about um, sensitivity, and they don't really talk about it in these notes, but they talk about it in the book. On page 174, and it's basically that the sensitivity is the likelihood of the uh, original critical path will change. So that means if you have uh, something in the critical path that's going to change in, in the amount of uh, time that it takes, if it's going to take longer amount of time, then that means the critical path may change or there may be more than one critical path. And that it says that um, uh, if the network has only one critical path and uh, the non-critical path activities have a lot of slack in them, meaning that um, uh, like this 165 is a lot of slack that you can work with, then in that case, the network is um, it's like non-sensitive. So it's not so, it's not so bad because you have some slack built into the network. But if the, if the network had two critical paths, say, for example, two where you have this zero number in place, then that means if you need more time for either one of those paths, uh, then you're going to need more time for the whole entire project. 
so then uh, that case you would have a sensitive network and um, also if you didn't have a lot of slack time in the non-critical paths like like in this case if this 165 was a smaller number then you would have then it would be a more sensitive network but as this example goes this is a fairly non-sensitive network because it has only one critical path and it has a lot of slack in the in the critical path okay so that's just the uh, description of sensitivity okay i think uh, before i go on with the next example we should just take a break here just so let's stop it here